Hey everyone, welcome to this review on the Mitsubishi GTO, also known as the 3000 GT or the Dodge Stealth if you're into that kind of thing. The GTO is a very unique car and a definite oddball of Mitsubishi's lineup. This car was born out of Japan's auto industry boom and honestly in many ways represents the pinnacle of Japanese engineering in the 90s. The GTO is all-wheel drive, twin turbo, came with adaptive front and rear aero, four-wheel steering, adjustable exhaust modes, and adjustable suspension. I mean, if I listed off those features today, you'd think I was talking about a new Ferrari or something, and that would be fair because the GTO in many ways was inspired by Ferrari and was built as a direct competitor to cars like the Nissan 300ZX and the Toyota Supra. However, even though it was faster than just about everything else in its price point, for some reason, the GTO never caught on like those other cars and was quickly overshadowed by its rivals. Maybe it's because of its admittedly poorly aged styling, or the fact that its partnership with Chrysler meant it never had that exclusive JDM aura about it, but even though the GTO only lasted 10 years in production, in many serious ways it shaped the future of Japanese automotive engineering into what we see today. So, what we have here today is the 1997 Gen 2 model. Let's take it out in its stock form for a test drive, and first, take a minute to listen to the engine. And I feel like the engine sound is actually fairly accurate of a stock GTO. It's missing some of the flair of a modified car, but not too much to complain about here. For the driving, the car handles well. It accelerates quickly and it has a nice power band and takes corners well without any excessive over or understeer or body roll. The car definitely feels weighty and the brakes are in need of an upgrade for sure, but even though you can feel some of that sluggishness because of the weight, it still manages it pretty well and luckily, brakes and weight reduction are easy mods. So let's go ahead and hop back into the shop and see what's available for us. Starting off with tire compounds, it's good to see the full array here. And it's also really good to see that we have track width options. I think all the Mitsubishis do because they were added after the game launched, but it's still really nice to see. Another great thing is that we actually have some body kit options. We've got full Bomex and Varus kits, as well as some other front bumpers and a different hood. I actually didn't expect this car to have any customization options out of just the normal Forza front splitter and rear wing but it's so great to see this and kind of fits the early 2000s tuner style that this car represents so well. These may not be the best looking body kits by today's standards, but they fit the era of the car perfectly. Moving on to some conversions, it looks like we have one engine swap available, the 6.2 liter V8, but we won't be using that in typical car review fashion. And then the car is all wheel drive, but we can swap it into rear wheel drive if we so choose. It's a bit odd that there's no front wheel drive option here because the car was offered in a front wheel drive variant. But with that aside, let's start building. I'm going to get to work here on a few tunes and then be back in a second. And to start us off, we're looking here at a B class driver's tune on the GTO, making 331 horsepower and weighing in at exactly 2,900 pounds. Now I was originally planning on building straight for A-Class, but as I kept upgrading parts, I noticed I was still well in B-Class and had a pretty strong car, so I decided to stay in B for a tune and see what I could put into the GTO while keeping it in its stock class. I have kept the stock tire compound, but we've upgraded the tire width as well as track width, almost fully upgraded the transmission, added race brakes, race suspension, upgraded ARBs, maximum weight reduction, and of course, left some room for power mods as well. Now this is definitely not a min-maxed build, but if you are going for more online competitiveness, I'd recommend downgrading the brakes a bit and adding a bit more power. So let's talk about how this B-Class driver's build drives. And guys, it has blown me away. It's not hard to make a B-Class car that drives pretty well, but this GTO is fast and it handles corners 
really easier than I have ever seen in a non-hyper car. This car is so easy to drive, it grips well even on the stock tire compound, it doesn't understeer at all which is common for all wheel drive cars, and in fact it has more turn in and cornering ability than most of my rear wheel drive builds. Now because we have upgraded brakes and are still on the stock compound, the GTO does get a bit squirrely under hard braking from speed, and you do need to handle it gingerly while running high speed corners, but those are very small issues for this car. Now we don't have much to compare it to on our leaderboard, as the only other B-Class car was a reference BRZ that hasn't been on the series yet. But to get a time on the board, the Mitsubishi GTO did its B-Class lap in 249.442. I mean, that's within swinging distance of our slower A-Class builds, and this isn't even meant to be a track spec car. So needless to say, this time got me really excited to build a faster version. I went back to the shop and started building for S1 class, and this is when I noticed the GTO's greatest fault in Forza. The tire width can only be upgraded once to 265s. This means we're hard capped for braking speed, cornering ability, and grip, and it's such a silly limit to impose on this really good car, and meant that the GTO can't reach the top of S1. So instead we've come up with an A-class track spec build on the GTO pushing just over 400 horsepower and weighing in under 2800 pounds. Since the B-class tune already had so many upgraded parts, I simply focused on what was missing, power and grip. We've upgraded to sport tires as race felt a bit unnecessary, added the Forza front splitter, and added cams, pistons, and some other power mods to bring the GTO up to its 403 horsepower. Now it's worth noting here that although this is a more serious track build, there are some changes you can make to further improve your lap times at the expense of worse and more challenging overall handling. Try downgrading the brakes one notch, removing the front splitter, and adding fully upgraded cams for a more online focused build. We'll touch on that again later, but for now, let's get back to the build at hand. And the GTO manages to impress me yet again. With upgraded tires and the front splitter, this car handles like really nothing I have yet to drive. Its turn-in is seriously unmatched, and you can keep on the power through the corner because it just has the right amount of oversteer. This is all-wheel drive done right. Enough rear-wheel bias to encourage fast cornering, but enough power up front as well to keep your grip. It feels like driving on rails. This car is amazing. You can hold incredible speed through fast corners, and even when you lose grip, it's still stable and pulls you right back in. The only complaint I can make about this car is that the braking is still a bit sketchy at high speeds due to the fact that we just can't really increase our front grip any further. Maybe some brake bias fine tuning could help with that, but I found it manageable as is. So let's get to the time. The Mitsubishi GTO in A-Class went around our test track in two 32.636, beating our previous time by almost a full second. And remember my suggestion about further min-maxing the build with upgraded cams and stock front aero? Well, I took that around the track as well, and managed to shave another second off the time, bringing us well into 231. That's bone shaker territory. This GTO is good. Now it's time to see how good it is on the Hokey score. Let's bring up the left side of the board and talk about a few scores here. For looks, I gave the car a 4 because it may have fit in perfectly to the first Fast and Furious movies, but in today's standards, it just hasn't aged well. And although the timeline doesn't quite match up, it almost looks like an Eclipse and a Mark IV Supra had a baby, but it just isn't quite right. For the fun factor, I gave it an 8 because it's really easy to drive, which does make it fun to drive, however, sometimes fun comes from a lack of control, and that's definitely not something this car has. It's just so predictable, and although that is fun in some ways, it does lack some of the excitement factor. Moving into the competitive scores, it's a bit heavy to be competitive in drag, but its Mitsubishi heritage makes it a pretty decent rally car. Race, though, is where this car really shines. Not only is it easy to drive, it's the fastest A-Class car we've tested yet. For drift, you can convert the car to rear-wheel drive, and it drifts about as well as any other basic car, nothing too special here. And then for online, I gave it another 10 
basically to reflect the race score. It's so easy to drive, and again, it's so fast. I mean, this car really competes with the best of them, to the point where I believe this would be a very strong competitor for A-Class Online Adventure. Now let's move over to the right side of the scoreboard. Our flexibility score is a 7.2. Now this makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of customization options, and the car is good in both race, drift, and rally. So there's a good variety of fun you can have with the GTO in Horizon 4. Moving down to the style bonus, this is a tough one, but I'm giving it a neutral score of 0. It's definitely not uncool, I mean it's got a bit of that underdog flavor to it, and it's obviously pretty fast, but like I said at the beginning of the video, it just lacks that following and that aura that's so common among other great Japanese sports cars. So with that said, that brings us to a total Hokie score for the Mitsubishi GTO, of 71.2, coming in just under the BMW M5 and Porsche 944, and solidifying its place as one of the best cars I've reviewed yet. And guys, that just about wraps it up for this car review. I hope you enjoyed the slightly updated format, and if you're new to the series, be sure to check out my other reviews. And with that, I do have one more thing for you all. Since this is the last video I'll be making before heading home for the holidays for a little bit, I want to give you the chance to get a gift. ghost to ghost an awesome member of my Discord server, has given me a 3 month Xbox Game Pass key to give to you guys. So put happy holidays somewhere in your comment on this video or simply just comment with happy holidays and I'll reach out within the week to the winner with instructions on how to claim your key. If you don't win though, I do have some more surprises as well. Hokey Hoshi merchandise is coming soon. I reached out to a designer, got a couple really cool designs that I'm really excited to share with you guys, and that will be coming out in about a week or two, so look out for that as well. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.